Very good. <laughs> good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee and with my friend, the fabulous Dorinda Jones, <laughs> who came up with the bill just for us. Um, I am an author of epic fantasy romance, and Dorinda is? Uh, an author of paranormal romance, paranormal mystery, mystery, young adult. Are we going to list them all? We're going to list them all. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know, it's funny because new authors talk about that all the time that, you know, they're like, oh, well, what should my tagline be? And what should I, pe what right. should I tell people I write right. and all this? And it's like, after a while, it like changes. It does. You know, yeah. and it's like, yeah. and there gets to be so many. It's like, right. well, let me yes. tell you. <laughs> well, and I thought I wrote Paranormal Romance forever. And then when we sold, I'm not listed under i'm shelved under mystery you've like, never been i've never been in shelved. Paranormal romance, yeah, yeah so i was like okay <laughs> i feel like my forehead looks very high here it's so pretty down here it's all right thank you see isn't she a good friend <laughs> 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 and i failed to say that today is oh friday you have to we have to do the charity ask because it's friday. friday there you go good job <laughs> april 14th and uh, I'm down here in fabulous Portales, New Mexico, uh, where Dorinda lives <laughs> <laughs> for the Jack Williamson Lectureship, which is very fun. Yeah. Uh, and so we did the reception last <clears throat> night and everything. And it was good. It was. Yeah. It was. It was very good. And I went to, uh, so Connie Willis's daughter is a crime scene investigator. And she does a talk every year. So I went to her talk and, oh, they're so fascinating. Writing mystery. That's like the dream come true. <laughs> Inside scoop. <laughs> Writing mystery? Yes. As, as a writer of mystery. Oh, I see. As a writer of mystery. Yes. yes. That, to go to something like that, you know. And, and it's kind of like Writer's Police Academy type stuff. You know, you learn the insides and the do's right. and don'ts. And <laughs> yeah. So did you get um, story ideas? Oh, yeah. Always. Well, you get story ideas <laughs> from do. walking down the street. I do. <laughs> so that's something that that people ask a lot is, you know, especially very new writers want to know where do you get your ideas? And and it becomes a hard question to answer because like are like trying to list all the genres we've written, right. written in mm -hmm. at a certain point. You're like, well, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. Yes, I told, I used to say, you know, the, an easier question is where don't I get ideas? Because <laughs> I mean, everything, we just get, it's constant. It's constant. Yeah. So how do you choose the ideas? Because I think that's what it comes down to is it's like, it's not a question of getting ideas. It's a question of deciding which ones are the good ideas, which ones are the ones that have staying power, that's which ones true. are worth writing because you unfortunately we are but made of fragile flesh yes. and cannot write them all <laughs> this is true so how do you decide <clears throat> well you know a lot of times if i if it's if i think it's a really good idea i'll just make notes on it and okay it's gone i i have it written down i can stop thinking about it but and i think it was oh, who was who said this stephen king maybe that if the idea just stays percolating in there like it w won't go away like, and it, you build on it and build on it and build on it. That's to me when you know it's a really good idea, when it's just really stuck. And, you know, like sometimes I'll wake up from a dream and I'll think, that's the best idea ever. And then like two days later, I'm like, that's a horrible idea. What was I thinking? <laughs> Where did I even come up with it? <laughs> but yeah, it just, it, if it stays, if it has that staying power and it keeps coming back to you and resonates, I think that that's a big tell. I know you have that one idea, um, and I don't, can I say what it is? Sure. That it, the Victorian serial killer? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, that you have wanted to write. I've wanted to write. For years and years and years. Yes, yes. I mean, maybe even 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Right? But you haven't written it because why? Um, there's a few reasons. So I, the first manuscript I ever wrote was historical romance. <coughs> Excuse me. And I was told <coughs> by several, I had entered it in different things, and it actually won a few things, but uh, contests. Um, and I was told by several people that I do not have a historical voice. 
Oh, so that's one reason. And another reason is as much as my agent loved the idea, she absolutely loved it. She again agreed. She said, I just, I don't have, I have a contemporary voice. Oh. Um, I have the snark and the sarcasm. of. So I'm like, okay. <clears throat> and that was part of it. Another I'm just laughing part. at you being snarky and sarcastic. <laughs> Another part is because I actually wrote the epilogue and my editor at St. Martin's wanted to read it and it was very dark hmm. it, and I write humor <laughs> and she's like, no, <laughs> no, absolutely. It was way too dark for her. She likes humorous stuff. And so I thought, okay, I need to rethink the whole thing and make it like a very dark humorous story instead of. The direction I was going. So I still want to write it. I just want it to be still comedy, but in a very, very dark way. So I think that that would still and be on brand. Still Victorian or? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we'll see. I don't know. Again, I, I don't know that I can pull the voice off. I mean, it could be something that you've learned over time. True. Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, you can learn to have a Absolutely. historical voice. Yeah. Absolutely. And especially reading like, some of the best i just started reading well not just about a year ago started reading kerrigan Byrne. Mm. oh my god her voice is exquisite and i'm like that's what i want that's what i, I want to write so i think what i'm going to do and we've become very good friends i think what i'm going to do is if i do ever start writing it i will um send a a bit to her and say you know what do you think of this where do i need to work on this i think i could work on it yeah in in, in practice and you know yeah she writes historical? Historical romance. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. And her voice is just gorgeous. It's very, uh, I would say kind of Julia Quinney. She's mm. very, yeah. Julia Quinn. Julia Quinney. Julia Quinn-esque. Yes. <laughs> yes. And my nose is running too. It's oh, this place. Oh, sorry. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's like, it's we're down. Portales. It's yes. Portales. It's oh. like the land of, um, allergies and watering eyes and <laughs> yeah yeah we're i'm like my eyes are watering yep. this morning yep <laughs> she's like they just do here yep <laughs> just part of our nuance <laughs> so so it's interesting because you know like that idea has haunted you for so long and elizabeth gilbert says in her big magic book mm -hmm. you've heard me talk about yes. this before it's a good book it is a good book. Yeah. I don't agree with everything she right. says. I, I agree with that. Exactly. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Because yeah. she says that um, if you don't write in an idea, it'll leave you and it'll go fight someone else. You, again, we've talked about this a lot. Jeffy's brain is amazing. And she, th she like, if she loses something, it will eventually come back to her. If I lose something, oh no, it's gone. <laughs> See, I think things will come back to you. I think you just don't trust your brain enough. So, because I know my brain. <laughs> I've lived with it for a really long time. <laughs> it's a biatch. <laughs> Stubborn, like your dogs. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, there is this whole theory that like your pets reflect yourself. That's your true. Your subconscious, yes, right? Yes, so. That's true. I can definitely see <laughs> My dogs have issues. <laughs> so last night, I mean, Dorinda has all these little gates in her house that she, you know, keeps the dogs out of all these different places. So like the guest rooms are, are beautifully set up and pristine, but they have dog gates yeah. in front of them. And I have to be good about learning to remember to close things behind me because I don't have that happen. You know, my cats go everywhere. Right. <laughs> right? Um, and so apparently uh, Dorinda's got like these big ottomans uh, full of toys for yes. the grandkids. Yes. But one of the dogs, yes. Bodie. Yes, the puppy. The yes. puppy has figured out how to open the Ottomans mm -hmm. and get out the kids' toys. Yes. And then he's gone through half of their toys. He just, she, they're just all over the living room for him. By the time I get there, I can go to the bathroom and come back and there's just one every, <laughs> this dog. So yes, we've having, having to be creative on trying to get, keep him out of the toy boxes. <laughs> so now the few remaining toys have been consolidated to this one toy box, um, Ottoman toy box mm -hmm. thing. And 
Dorinda put these two, what are they like? They're kind of like Ottomans and little, little cube, cube things, things yeah. right? That she stacked on top of it to yes. keep him from opening the lid. And so then last night we got home and what had happened? He got one of those down and ripped it apart. <laughs> This dog is lucky to be alive. <laughs> so and, it's escalating. Yes, it's escalating. <laughs> and it's so funny because I was out for a walk one morning and I saw this shadow behind me, like right behind me. And I thought somebody was following me. It's like, what in the world? And I turned around and it was a puppy. And it was this puppy. And he followed me home, literally. I, I can say it was it was meant to be. But he, he has been... Um, He's been a challenge. A challenge. Yes, that's a good word. <laughs> So this is Dorinda's subconscious. It's like <laughs> you turn your back for a moment and it's dug out all of the toys. Yes, all of the toys. Oh my God. That is so 100% accurate. Is it? Like it's I'm not it's... even funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, to be serious, and I know you and I talk a whole lot about our, because we co-work together over Zoom. It's rare mm -hmm. for us to actually be together. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, we talk about our struggles with writing a whole lot but compared to many writers and especially to um, newbie writers out there who are like still trying to put it together and finish a book and all of that kind mm -hmm. of thing um you you are quite productive i mean you've written how many books uh 20, 28 28 29 i'll say 20 well 28 and a half we'll say that <laughs> <laughs> including the ongoing yes, one yes yes <laughs> is it halfway though really no no 28 and one quarter <laughs> so so talk a little bit about your process how do you work um so i am a plotter pre-plotter a pre-plotter thank yes, you pre -plotter. since you're on my fucking show yes sorry yes. <laughs> <laughs> she's so saucy isn't she <laughs> You love me. <laughs> I do. I do. Um, so yeah, I, I outline like crazy. Um, and I just, I just see that as my roadmap, you know? Um, and then the journey is of course the writing part, but, uh, I kind of have to know where I'm going or I get stuck uh, or I write myself into a corner that I don't know how to get out of. Hmm. And once I do that, then I, there are a thousand other things I could be doing Besides trying to figure out how to get unstuck and digging toys out those, of the ottoman. Digging toys out of the ottoman, exactly. <laughs> so, so as long as I have a pretty solid outline, which I don't always stick to, but you know, for the most part. Um, so that's what I do. I outline, my outlines are pretty long. They're for a regular novel, they're usually forty to sixty pages. And <laughs> <laughs> and they include things like snippets of dialogue they do, yeah. and <clears throat> Not yeah. much description. You don't like writing description. No, no, yeah. no description. It's just like, where are we? What's going on? Who's in the scene? And then, you know, what's happening? Why in fact, your this... editor makes you describe things sometimes, she right? She's like, could we know, like, <laughs> what kind of room they're in? <laughs> yeah, she'll be like, we have no idea where they're at right now. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> she'll probably let you know. <laughs> I'm getting better about that, though. I'm getting better. Um, but, uh, and that was a challenge, was learning to write description, to describe something in an interesting way. You know, it, it's, you don't think about it. And this one doesn't probably doesn't even have to think about it. She's amazing. Well, I'm, I have to, I'm a describer. So. Right. Right. Yeah. So, and I'm just, when I first started writing, my first drafts were like 95% dialogue. Wow. Like it was literally like a, like a script almost more, you know? And, uh, so, but I am getting better and I do kind of describe things as I go. And You know, I got a funny piece of feedback on, um, on Dark Wizard, which you were, you know, helped me save that book. Mm -hmm. uh, so good. <laughs> thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I, yeah, that's, I, Dorinda was there from the beginning mm -hmm. on it and a huge cheerleader for it, which was great because I needed Very that. Good. But I got like various kinds of strange feedback on that book. And one person who I asked to read it, and give me editorial feedback said, um, she said, well, one thing is, is that a lot of the world building is re revealed through dialogue. And so, you know, you, you might look at that. And I was like, is that wrong? That's so right. It's unreal. <laughs> if you can, if your dialogue can do double duty like that, 
I mean, yeah, I always or thought, almost triple duty in a way. Yeah, yeah, because you're doing character mm-hmm. and moving the story, story forward. forward and world building. Yes, and it was like, well, wait, why is that a bad thing? Right, right. Yeah, no, that's so a very good thing. <laughs> I was puzzled by that. That's odd. Yeah. Because you, I mean, if your stories are like 90% dialogue mm-hmm. when you write them, then that's what you're doing. Right, absolutely. You're doing the triple whammy. I too. am doing triple whammy, girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, going back to what you were saying about learning to do the thing that you're not good at doing, that's a huge part of moving craft forward over time. True. Right? Because a question I've been getting a lot lately is from like the intermediate writers, people who have written a few books Mm -hmm. and want to get better. And they're like, okay, what do I do to get better when I'm, I'm not a newbie. I've written some books. I've got an audience and I want to keep improving my craft. And, and I think it's a kind of a difficult question to answer. I think Mm -hmm. Um, you're always going back and doing more classes. I am. I'm actually doing one next week with Margie Watson. So I'm doing an immersion and, um, and what do you hope to get out of that? I just, I don't, I feel like every time I do a class with Margie, I, I learn something new, like a, just a little tiny bit. Cause you can reach this point where you take classes and you go to workshops and you really don't learn anything. But if you learn one new thing, it's worth it, you know? And with Margie, it's, it's almost part of it is refresher to remind me, okay, pay attention to this, pay attention to that. And I can, you know, use this and, and, um, also, the more you do it, the more you internalize it. So it just kind of happens more naturally. The, the things that she teaches anyway, Margie teaches. Um, so that's part of it too. And just hanging out and writing with friends. So it's kind of rejuvenating. <laughs> it is. It is very rejuvenating. Yeah. 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 So, so I think that going back to this thing about learning to do the thing that you don't do well. I mean, some of it's just like freaking doing it, right? right? It is. It I mean, is. that's how it is for me with like the fight scenes or battle yeah, scenes and yeah. that kind of thing. It's like, I don't like to write them and I just have to actually do it. Yeah. And yeah. I've gotten better at yeah. it. Yeah. And so it's the same for you with description, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, I need to put in description yes. here. Yes. Yeah. And, and learning to, you know, how much is enough? And, you know, how much is too much and all of that. Well, I don't think you will ever be like the classic, (laughs) you know, doorstop fantasy novel of 15 pages of description. And it's like, we don't have to worry about that with you. I I realized that when I read uh, Shields Dart. And I was like, yeah, that's never going to be. One of my all-time favorite books. It's it's amazing. So you loved it. Oh, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. And the description, like, oh my, exquisite. Exquisite. And I'm just like, but not me, (laughs) (laughs) not who I am. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I've I've been thinking a lot about scope and focus because in writing back to my favorite subject, me and my work, (laughs) um, you know, with rogue familiar, I've been, you know, deep into revising and Dorinda's heard me angsting about it as all of you have Mm -hmm. heard me angsting about it. Uh, And I think some of it is that, I'm I'm really hitting that difficult point with fantasy romance in this book because, you know, I tend to have a very, very close lens, you know, like time, you know, I, time moves very slowly in my books mm-hmm. and, you know, and it's a whole lot about the feelings and the relationships yeah, right, and all right. of that. But at the same time, I'm like trying to get this epic arc to move, right? right? right. Which is hard to do when yeah. people are involved with their feelings. It's true. <laughs> Dang it. Dang feelings. <laughs> so, so yeah, this has ended up being like a very intimate book, um, which, you know, I thought it was going to help move the overall arc forward more, right. but no. Right. Well, those are good too, though. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. It's like, why, why do you want someone to read the book? Why do people read books right, and right. so forth? Yeah. And so. Yeah. yeah. It's funny you talk about time because the, Charlie Davison series, I didn't even realize it until I got to like the 13th book. So there's 13 main books in that one. And only a year has passed. In the whole thing. In the whole thing. <laughs> right. You're like, huh. Really? Oh my really? God. And between two books, 
eight months of that skipped ahead. Oh wow, we skipped ahead eight months, and I'm like, and I so still really the whole thing's like four months <laughs> of right, actual right. time. Actual. <laughs> well, that's no wonder I love you. That's, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's like some people are good at writing. Uh, you know, like I have a friend who writes these stories that span like centuries yes, like a thousand yes. years and i'm like you know i'm lucky to get to a day right, <laughs> right exactly exactly all the charlie books and actually all the sunshine books too they're like three or four days and in my outline i literally i didn't even think about this but i literally say day one this happens on day one day two this happens on day two that's how my outlines are and i just that's how i think yeah and and i do think that might come back around to you know my my mantra you know figure out what your process is right. and own it you know maybe i'm just not good at writing over maybe long so. spans of time so. i mean because we have to talk about feelings yes that's right feelings are important <laughs> and it's all about emotion do you think so no I regardless do. of genre <clears throat> i do oh. i think if you're not putting emotion on the page if you're not eliciting emotion then you're doing something wrong now academics may disagree they actually will disagree <laughs> okay academics cover your ears <laughs> but i just think it's all about the bottom line is emotion that's very interesting yeah. um you know who gave that great talk at rwa kristen contemporary romance author yes uh we're not Kristen, Kristen Higgins. Kristen Higgins. Higgins. There yes, we go. It was so good. So you can good. actually look that up online and it's, oh. I'll see if I can link to it in okay, the show notes. Because yeah, yeah. she said something. Here's like the tidbit. You know, if you learn one thing. She talks about in this, she says, if you can elicit one emotion in your reader, then you can elicit all emotions. Yes. And I thought that was so meaningful because yes. she talks about like, if you can get your reader to laugh then later it will be very easy to make them cry yes, because they're yes. already in that yeah. emotional engagement. Yeah. And that was actually one of my main goals in life when I started writing. Main goals in, in life. In life was to be able to make my readers laugh and cry at the same time. You're just kind of a sadist. I you? am. I am. <laughs> but I have I tea with Satan. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like you have something here. Uh, Dorinda has all of the little writerly sayings here, and we'll, we'll say, we have to sign off. But like, here's this one: deadlines amuse me. <laughs> I don't have little writerly sayings you around don't. my office. No, yeah. I don't have that. And, and here's the: I, I took a photo of this and oh, put on you? social media. Did but you? the mug that says, um, "I have to put it up here." There we go. A writer must have text appeal. Yes, I don't have these things. <laughs> All right, we should sign off okay. because we have things to do, people to see yes, and talk yep, to. Yep. So, but it was delightful having you it here. It was delightful being here. Always fun <laughs> to hang out. Uh, and so, hope you all have a great weekend. And I will talk to you all on Monday. Dorinda won't. I will not. Okay. I will be in at my immersion class. <laughs> That's right, being immersed. Immersed. I'm going to be immersed. <laughs> all right, you all take care. Bye bye.